Hi, I'm Dr. Abhishek Joshi and in this video lecture, I'm going to discuss about the optical sources that is the laser diode rate equation. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the laser diode is structured and it's working. But in this lecture, we are going to consider the derivation of the laser diode rate equation. So, we, in this lecture, we'll be discussing about the laser diode rate equation, the diode characteristics, the semiconductor injection laser that is the advantage and semiconductor and structure, the laser efficiency, the numerical problems based on it, and the laser single mode operation, the laser modulation. So, these are the content of this lecture. So, laser diode rate equation, we are going to start with the behavior of the semiconductor laser that can be described by the rate equation for the electrons and the photon density in the active layer of the device. So, the two rate equation for the electron density, so electron density is given by small n and the photon density given by phi. So, photon density we are representing it by phi. So, we can write that is dn by dt that is the rate of change of the electron density that is nothing but the current density j by ed minus n by tau sp minus c n phi that is per cubic meter per second. And we have the photon density that is the rate of change of the photon density that is given by d phi by dt that is equals to c n phi plus del n by that is the electron density divided by tau sp and tau ph. So, where j which we have seen here that is capital J is the current density in amperes per square meter and E is the charge on the electron and D is the thickness of the recombination region and tau sp is the spontaneous emission lifetime which is equivalent to tau to 1, where c is the coefficient which incorporates the b coefficients and the delta is a small fraction value and tau ph is the photon lifetime. So, this rate equations given in the equation may be balanced by taking into account all the factors which affect the number of electrons and holes in the laser structure. So, hence in equation, the first term indicates the increase in the electron concentration in the conduction band as the current flows in the junction diode. So, the electrons lost from the conduction band by spontaneous and stimulated transition are provided by the second and the third term respectively. So, in the equation, the first term depicts the stimulated emission as a source of photons. So, the fraction of the photons produced by the spontaneous emission which combine to the energy in the laser modes in given by the second term. So, this term is often neglected. So, however, a delta is very small. So, the final term represents the delay that is a decay in the photon and resulting from the losses in the optical cavity. So, these rate equation may be used to study both the transient and the steady state behavior of the semiconductor laser. So, we are having that is C times of n that is electron density minus 1 by tau pH that is time for the photon. So, we are having the threshold values of n which satisfy the equality if n is larger than the threshold value and then the phi can increase when n is smaller it cannot. So, we are having the threshold value for the electron density that is an nth that is given by 1 by c tau pH that is the photon. So, the threshold current 
written in terms of its current density that is jth requires to maintain that is n equals to nth is in the steady state when phi is equals to 0 and may be obtained from equation. So, we have the current density jth by ed that is equals to nth by tau sp. So, hence the equation that defines the current required to sustain an excess electron density in the laser when the spontaneous emission provides only decay mechanism and the steady state photon density that is phi s is provided by substituting the equation. So, if we substitute the equation what we get is that is j minus j t h by e d minus c nth phi s that is equals to 0. So, by rearranging the terms we obtain that is a photon density that is phi s that is equals to 1 by c n t h j minus j t s that is the current density by e d and per cubic meter. So, substituting the c n t h in this equation. So, we have the c n t h that is given by 1 by tau p h. So, c n t h is 1 by tau p h. So, we are having phi s that is tau p h by E d j minus j t h per cubic meter. So, the photon density phi s cannot be a negative quantity as this is meaningless and for phi s to be greater than 0, the current must exceeds its threshold value. So, this phi s is proportional to the amount by which j exceeds its threshold value. So, as we can see in this figure, this is the ideal light output when the current characteristics for an injection laser. So, we can see the current characteristics as the current increases, we are having the light output which is increasing in a linear fashion. Before that, before the threshold current, we are having the spontaneous emission. After the threshold current, it is following the stimulated emission region. So, this is the stimulated emission region in the injection laser and this is the spontaneous emission region. So, the semiconductor injection laser or the injection laser diode that is also known as ILD or the Fabry Parrot cavity laser. So, the electroluminescent properties of the forward bias PN junction diode have been considered and the stimulated emission by the recombination of the injected carriers is encouraged in the semiconductor injection laser also called as the injection laser diode that is also abbreviated as ILD or simply the injection laser. So, by the provision of the optical cavity in the crystal structure in order to provide the feedback of photons, this gives an injection laser several major advantages over the semiconductor source that is the LED also known as light emitting diode. So, that may be used for the optical communication. So, we are having the advantages. So, it what are the advantages? High radiance due to the amplifying effect of the stimulated emission that is the injection laser which generally supply milliwatts of optical output power. Narrow line width on the order of 1 nanometer or 10 Armstrong or less which is useful in minimizing the effects of the material dispersion. Modulation capabilities which at present present up to the gigahertz range and will undoubtedly be improved upon. So, relative temporal con coherence which is considered essential to allow the heterodyne that is the coherent detection in high capacity systems, but at present is primarily of use in single mode system. So, good spatial coherence which allows the output to be focused by a lens in a spot 
विच हैज अ ग्रेटर इंटेंसिटी दैन दी डिस्पर्स अनफोकस्ड एमिशन सो दिस परमिट्स एफिशियंट कपलिंग टू द ऑप्टिकल आउटपुट पावर इन टू द फाइबर इवन फॉर फाइबर विद लो न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर द स्पेटल फोल्ड matching to the optical fiber which may be obtained with the laser source and is not possible with an coherent emitter and consequently the coupling efficiency as much reduced so as we can see in the figure we are having the semiconductor injection laser structure here we have the cleaved crystal mirror mirrors and it is forming a fabry parrot cavity with a, these two mirrors that is mirror 1 and mirror 2 so here we can see we are having the energy which is released in form of hf and hf on the left as well as the right and uh, we on the top we are having the p type gallium arsenide on the top and at the, the bottom we are having the n type gallium arsenide the ohmic contacts are on the top that is positive and uh, at the bottom so uh, we have the active region sandwiched between the p and the n type where we are, we can see there is a release of the energy in form of photons and it is forming a p n junction diode so this is the schematic diagram of an gallium arsenide homo junction injection laser with an fabry parrot cavity so next important topic is the laser efficiency so that operational efficiency of the semiconductor laser may be defined in terms of the differential external quantum efficiency that is given by eta d which is the ratio of the increase in photon output rate for a given increase in the number of the injected electrons so if pe is the optical power emitted by the device i is the current and small e is a charge on the electron and hf is the photon energy so where the efficiency that is the differential external quantum efficiency eta d is given by dpe by hf divided by di by e so that is approximately equals to that is dpe by di and eg where eg is the band gap energy so where eg is the band gap energy expressed in the unit that is electron volt so it may be noted that is eta d gives a measure of the rate of the charge of the optical output power with current and hence defines the slope of the output characteristics so for a continuous wave also abbreviated as cw semiconductor laser it usually have the values in the range of 40 to 60% so alternately the internal quantum efficiency of the semiconductor laser that is given by eta i so it that is equal to the number of the photon produced in the laser cavity divided by the number of the injected electrons so internal efficiency we can calculate as the number of photon produced in the laser cavity divided by the number of the injected electrons so it is the ranging between 50 to 100% so it is related to the differential external quantum efficiency by the expression that is given by eta d that is equals to that is a differential efficiency quantum efficiency that is equals to the internal efficiency eta by 1 by 1 plus 2 alpha l log that is 1 by r1 into r2 where r1 and r2 are the reflectivities of the mirror and we have the alpha that is the loss coefficient of the laser cavity and l is the length of the laser cavity and we are having r1 and r2 are the cleaved mirror reflectivities so another parameter is the total efficiency total efficiency that is the external quantum efficiency given by eta t which is 
the efficiency defined as that is eta t that is total number of output photons divided by the total number of the injected electrons. So, that is given by P e by H f divided by I by e. So, we are having the external power P e by I times of e. So, as the power emitted that is P e changes linearly when the injection current I is greater than the threshold current I t h. So, we are having the total efficiency that is eta t that is approximately equals to the differential quantum efficiency eta d 1 minus I t h that is the intensity divided by I. So, the external power efficiency of the device that is the device efficiency that is eta e p in converting the electrical input to the optical output that is given by that is external power efficiency P e by P e into 100. So, we know that the power can be calculated as I into V. So, P e by I V into 100. So, it can be further reduced by that P by I is nothing but the E g the band gap. So, eta t eta t multiply with E g by V into 100. So, we have expressed the device efficiency in terms of the total efficiency that is eta t E g by V into 100. So, this one numerical based on this that is the total efficiency of the injection laser with a gallium arsenide active region is 18 percent and the applied voltage to the device is 2.5 volt and the band gap energy for the gallium arsenide that is E g is given by 1.43 electron volts to so calculate the external power efficiency of the device. So, we know the external power efficiency formula. So, it is given by that is P uh, N T E g by V into 100. So, N T here we have that is 18 percent. So, 18 percent multiply with E g, E g is given by 1.43. So, 1.43 by 2.5, 2.5 is the voltage multiply by 100. So, we are getting the device efficiency as 10 percent. So, this is how we can solve the numericals based on this laser. So, laser mode operation. So, for a single mode operation, the optical output from a laser must contain only a single longitudinal and a single transverse mode. So, has the spectral width of the emission from the single mode device far smaller than the broadened transition line width. So, it is indicated that an inhomogeneously broadened laser can support a number of the longitudinal and the transverse modes simultaneously given a multi mode output. So, single transverse mode operation. So, however, may be obtained by reducing the aperture of the resonant cavity such that only the TEM00 mode is supported. So, obtain the single mode operation, it is then necessary to eliminate all but one of the longitudinal modes. So, one method of achieving the single longitudinal mode operation is to reduce the length that is capital L of the cavity until the frequency separation of the adjacent mode given in the equation as we know that that is del f is given by c by 2 n into l which is larger than the laser transition line width that is the gain curve which, which we have seen in the previous slides. Then only the single mode which falls within the transition line width and oscillates with the laser cavity. So, it is clear that the rigid control of the cavity parameters is essential to provide the mode stabilization necessary to achieve and maintain this single mode operation. So, this uh, figure shows the typical single longitudinal mode output spectrum for the single mode injection laser. So, as we can see it is having the single mode. So, at a particular wavelength that is 1.55 micrometer, we are having the relative intensity, the maximum value of the relative intensity. So, we have VC, uh, VCSEL laser architecture for the single mode operation. So, as we can see the basic architecture of the vertical cavity surface emitting laser that is VCSEL. Here we can see we are having the contacts on the top 
and contacts and we are having the silicon dioxide mirror SiO2 mirrors and the indium phosphate substrate and in between we are having the indium gallium arsenide phosphate MQW active region this is active region and this is forming the resonant cavity we are having the p contact here here we have this p contact and the mirror uh, made up of the silica or the al aluminum oxide al2o3 and the heat sink is made up of the gold so the modulation of the laser diode how we can use as a modulation uh, purpose so we are having the bias current to the laser diode we have the continuous pow wave power that is a constant optical output power we are getting so optical modulator here we are providing the electronic modulation circuit to it and the output is the modulated optical output power so that is the operational concept of the generic external modulator so the modulation uh, here we can see we are having the beam splitter we have the continuous wave input light then we are having the phase shifter so here we are getting the two wavelengths in the modulated light output so we are having a beam combiner which combine these two waves and we are getting the uh, uh, external modulation with the help of the operational concept of an electro optical lithium neobate external modulator so in this lecture we have discussed about the laser diode rate equation laser diode characteristics semiconductor injection laser advantages in structure the laser efficiency the numerical based on it and the laser single mode operation and the laser modulation so here i am going to stop this lecture thank you the reference for this is the john m senior and that is optical fiber communication the principle and practices and the grad kaiser optical fiber communication